Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. So today we're going to be talking about CM Punk and the AEW World Championship and all the ball of confusion surrounding this nonsense. So, uh, <laughs> on Rampage, CM Punk came out with very red eyes and he cut this promo saying that every bone in his body told him to turn around and go home. Even the broken ones. Then says that he never wanted to let anyone down. Or make anyone feel like they were disappointed. And that he loved every second he had to be in the ring. Then he laid it out. He says he needs surgery. A couple of things are broken. But the biggest being his heart. And that he's come back from worse. This is a bump in the road. And when it comes to the AEW world title. He said he doesn't want to hold the place up. There's a laundry list of people who are looking to take his spot. And that he wanted to relinquish the title. But... Tony Khan said he believed in him. And then he says he's not going to let the doubt creep in. He's going to get back. And the get back will be greater than the comeback. And he's going to come back stronger, better, and faster than he ever did before. Then the confusion comes out. Because most people have no idea whether he's actually relinquishing a title or not. For starters, he never even specified an injury that was actually going to be occurring. So... The dirt sheets, so always put this in quotations, the dirt sheet said he has a broken foot. That was apparently the actual injury. He didn't say anything about his foot being broken in the promo. Apparently the dirt sheets managed to find out and CM Punk didn't tell anybody. So uh, apparently CM Punk has a broken foot, according to the dirt sheets. But they got worked before, so we don't know. He's going to require surgery. There's no timetable for his return, and he will not be relinquishing the title. Instead... AEW will be creating an interim championship. Now, here's the confusion about the interim title. The, there's going to be a battle royal to open Dynamite. The winner of that battle royal will then go along to wrestle John Moxley in the main event of that Dynamite. So, the winner of the, the battle royal will be wrestling twice that evening. The winner of that match between the battle royal winner and and John Moxley will wrestle for the interim title at Forbidden Door. Against who? Who knows? And that is the confusion. As as time of recording, as I sit here listening and watching the dirt sheets and everybody else scramble about. They're running about like chickens with their heads cut off. Because we can't just vacate the title. I mean, just vacate the belt. You know, even if you vacated the belt, this convoluted way that we're dealing with this is absolutely ridiculous. Now, <laughs> first, let's talk about the injury. All right, CM Punk was hurt. Some people say he might have gotten hurt um, stage diving on in the pay-per-view. Some people say he got hurt in the match on the pay-per-view. Some people say he got hurt. Well, not the, not the pay-per-view, but Dynamite, I'm sorry. That he stage dived during his entrance on dynamite and he maybe broke his foot there. Some other people say he broke his foot at some point during the match. Um, it doesn't matter when he broke his foot to be quite honest, but his foot is broken. And now he's going to be gone for a while, but there's no timetable for his return. This is very bad for AEW, especially after Tony Khan went on his rant about how great CM Punk was and the media scrum and how he did all of this. He drew all of these great ratings and these epic buy rates and all this kind of stuff. He was their tippy tippy top guy, apparently. And now he's gone. For the foreseeable future, not permanently. He's going to be gone for a while, though. AEW, do they have a backup plan? Doesn't look like it. From the convoluted way to, to come up with just an interim champion, seems to me like he could have just had a tournament. Seems to me that you could have just had the Battle Royal winner, Russell John Moxley, at Forbidden Door. Seems to me you could have done literally anything other than this crazy situation that you're doing right now. I don't understand why it has to be Sudoku just to decide who an interim champion is going to be. It doesn't have to be this, this. It doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be some guy has to wrestle twice. You have to also explain how John Moxley gets to skip the Battle Royal. Because as some enterprising, I, I don't follow the, the rank, it's, it could be wrong. 
Some people have said John Moxley not even the number one contender. And that other people are the number one contender. I think somebody said Wardlow is the number one contender. Has the most wins in a year or something like that. Whatever the rankings they put out. So apparently they're going to reshuffle the rankings so that John Moxley is the number one contender. And they're going to have an eliminator between him and the guy who wrestles at the, who wins the Battle Royal. Okay, fine. But why does that match have to be on Dynamite? Why can't that be the match at Forbidden Door? <laughs> How are you going to de- decide the other competitor in this match? If it's going to be... We're just going to pick somebody. Well, then just pick somebody. Forgo the goddamn Battle Royal. Just pick the top two contenders. That's what you have a ranking system for. The top two guys are going to step up and fight for the title. I mean, that means somebody's going to have to take a loss. So what? When losses happen in wrestling, they'd be okay. I guarantee you, whoever, whoever, the number one contender and the number two contender, I guarantee you neither one of them was going to wrestle for the title and beat the champion anyway. So just go ahead, have number one wrestle number two at the pay-per-view, and that's it. That was the point of you booking this whole thing. You weren't taking the title off Punk for any, for a while anyway, so it doesn't matter who number one or number two is because Punk wasn't losing the belt no time soon. At least I don't envision that being the case. So why can't number one just beat number two or number two beat number one and we get out of the way, get out of this thing? Why does it have to be some convoluted uh, recipe for grandma's fruitcake? Why we got to do this? Why can't this be simpler? You know, I, whatever. It's nonsense. All right. So everybody's confused about what to do with the title. I don't even care about the title because they're not relinquishing it. So Punk is still the champion. That means whoever wins is going to be the interim champion, which is basically being, I don't know, the C, like, does it even count as being a real champion at that point? You're the interim champion. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, because CM Punk is going to have surgery, that means that there will be no CM Punk versus Hiroshi Tanahashi at Forbidden Door. So that means you got to have a, a new opponent for Tanahashi. So this is also a question of what are we going to do in terms of filling Punk's spot? Now, you could honestly put Brian Danielson here and everything will be great, you know, but then you have to, you know, explain why Brian Danielson isn't in the title picture and he's instead wrestling Tanahashi. I mean, <laughs> I would imagine that, uh, Danielson would be the guy you give the belt to, right? That's what I would imagine, either him or Moxley. That's who I would imagine you give the belt to. I can't imagine you putting the belt back on Hangman Page. That makes no sense whatsoever. That makes none. Jericho, there's no point in that. Eddie Kingston would be a good idea. You know, that would be a uh, a surprise, a dark horse. That would be a feel-good moment. That would make people feel better about CM Punk being gone is that a guy like Eddie Kingston gets that spot. Would they actually do Eddie Kingston? No, doubtful. All right. So if I had to venture a guess, I would venture the guess that the spot as AEW world champion is likely to go to Brian Danielson. And I'm guessing Brian Danielson is going to be the guy who's probably going to take up CM Punk's spot. Because that's kind of how people have been doing these two guys for the last 10 years. They've been seeing them as interchangeable. If Punk is gone or he's down, okay, just slide Danielson in the spot. Or these two guys are like two sides of the same coin. It's not really the case. I think Danielson is far superior than Punk. You know? And if they had done Danielson right, Danielson probably could be drawing more than Punk. But they didn't want to use Brian Danielson correctly. I mean, the guy who just literally made an event at WrestleMania against Roman Reigns. I mean, whatever. <laughs> That's what I would do. I would simply have Moxley, Danielson at the pay-per-view. Danielson goes over. Danielson is the champion. Blackpool Combat Club, they're, they're sportsmen. They can get over fighting each other for a little bit. And that's what I would do. But apparently... The Booker of the Year has this incredible idea of a Battle Royal winner who's going to win a Battle Royal just for the right to probably lose to Moxley. And to me, that doesn't make much sense. Um, so, uh, people who are CM Punk fans, uh, I feel bad for you. 
A lot of people are emoting all over the internet. I'm not the kind of person. I'm not a big fan of CM Punk. It sucks that he's hurt. You know? But it is what this is wrestling. <laughs> wrestling people get injured, man. And I remember no, I'm not gonna say that, but uh ultimately, you know, the style of AEW has to change. You know? It, Kenny Omega's on the shelf. And now CM Punk is on the shelf. These are two of the top guys that they had in this company. And they're both gone at the same time. And I keep hearing that Kenny Omega is not coming back anytime soon. So, and I I even read this, uh, this thing that says Kenny Omega will never be 100% again. And I was like, oh God, there's somebody being very dramatic. And there is much incentive to the dirt sheets to dramatize these injuries. And there's people, again, I, I watched it in real time. As CM Punk tweeted out that he had an, an important announcement, so everybody should watch Dynamite. Everybody was like, oh, I heard he was injured. He's going to be retiring. I'm like, retiring? First starters, can we just come to grips with the fact that he really is injured? Can we get to that part first before we start putting him in an old folks home? Like, can we just make sure he's actually hurt first? So once he had, once he had the eyes of all red, or either he's a really good actor or he's really hurt. So I accept the fact that he's actually hurt because we know his acting skills ain't for shit. So, but he cut a great promo. Um, it was kind of uplifting, you know. Um, I, all the people emoting all over the internet. I'm just, I'm just not a fan of that. It's just it's literal smart tears. Um, <laughs> I'm tempted to do it. But I don't want to, you know, make fun of people while they're in a the downtime. I want to make fun of fun of people for other things, not for being sad that their fave is hurt. I'm not going to do that. That's kind of scumbaggish for me. I'm not going to do that. It, it's low for, even for me. And you know, I'm trying to be a classy YouTube channel. Classy. All right. So uh, let me know what you guys think of CM Punk's injury. What should they do to decide the AEW World Champion, and who should that be? Let me know in the comment section below. Like share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace out.